All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Charlotte Adams here today, and she is amazing. She has her own podcast on our channel, so go check her out. She is an amazing uh, guitar instructor, music instructor. She is a songwriter, and she has spent her whole life dedicated to music, and she is very talented and experienced in that area. And today, she really wants to talk about songwriting, and she wants to also talk about, you know, get, get dive deep into it and, and go really into understanding music and understanding, you know, the, the purpose of music. And, you know, I'm so glad you're on the show today, Charlotte. And, you know, I have a question for you. How did you start to teach songwriting? Because, you know, I, you talk a lot about the guitar and everything, but you also, you know, you're very into songwriting. How did you start teaching songwriting? Well, I actually, um, it came from my guitar lessons. And as you know, I'm, I'm known as a guitar teacher, and that's where the direction of all my books and most of my teaching. But, you know, there have been times, I mean, you'll introduce me as a music educator. I'm also known as a music educator with my direction being guitar. And so what that means is that when you come to me for guitar lessons, I kind of give you whatever I see you need. So maybe I'll say, um, hey, do you want to work on your vocals here? You know, because I can I can teach you voice. Um, and then we can work that's going to elevate your whole song performance. Mm -hmm. um, or I might say, hey, you want to do a little arranging here and let's write a little, little riff or, or, or an interlude to this song to make it more interesting. And then, um, you know, arranging various aspects of music other than just how, where to put your fingers on a particular to create a particular song. Right. So I've had uh, students who write their own songs. Maybe they perform and maybe they just perform for their friends and family or maybe they're trying to, to make it in the music business. And right. so they bring me their songs. I start doing the same thing. Like, oh, I think we need more distinction between the verse and the chorus. We need to power this up. We need to um, make more nuance here, more clarity there, whether it's in the lyrics or the melody or the chords. Let's make these, put some chord substitutions in to make it more interesting. So basically workshopping their their songs with them, which turned out to be fabulously successful for everyone in just a short amount of time. It just really brought them to a new level with their songwriting. So I recently started thinking, I'm doing this in private lessons. I should offer this to people because they don't know that that's possible. So my first thought was to make a course. Um, and that's always a good thing if you're a teacher, you know, then a whole bunch of people can get it. But usually it's not such a great thing for the individual because they are individuals. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you may have never written a song before. You may have no clue how to write a song. Or you may be an experienced songwriter who wants to take it to the next level. And so it's not a one size fits all. I think a one on one workshop is a lot more effective and it's more fun, especially more fun for me because I get to work with each individual. So that's what I'm offering is a, a one on one workshop. And I just started offering that. It's new, which is why I wanted to talk about it today. So for it, it's, you know, it's it's good for both people who have never written a song or people who are into songwriting. They'll both benefit from it. Right. Right. Because it's tailored to the individual. So um, maybe you've never written a song and you only want to write one song because your boyfriend or girlfriend has a birthday coming up or you want to honor your one of your parents or something. And you think this would be an awesome gift, which, by the way, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we can work workshop that, you know, I'll ask you ideas, you'll start coming up with words, phrases, um, feelings, you know, and we workshop that together, and then we bring it to a complete piece that can be performed. Or as I've done for some of my students, I can actually add in instruments, you know, so you could play maybe a simple accompaniment on the guitar or the keyboard and sing it. If you want, I'll sing a harmony. If you want, I'll put in a bass line. If you want, I'll play a second guitar. I'll play a lead to it or whatever and make a recording for the for your gift. Or 
maybe you've got a song that, or a number of songs that you've been performing and you start feeling like they kind of all sound the same or they're dry or I need need to put some oomph into this. So that would be for you too. Then we workshop it in a totally different way because you've already got this foundation and you may even have a fan base. Right. Anything in between. So being one-on-one -on -one allows us to do that. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, and there are many times where I've listened to music and, you know, I've heard like one or two of the words and then immediately I would think in my head what I would, I would say, you know, I would write if I was the songwriter and the songwriter actually sings those words. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, maybe I do have a little knack for music, you know, and, uh, you know, so it, I think it's, I think, you know, I think everybody has, you know, creativity. It's just making their creativity come out, you know, and it's really tapping into it, you know, we just, you know, because we all carry creativity, I believe. And it's just, but learn how to tap into it. Now, do I you have agree. any? Totally. I think we're naturally, that's who we are as creative beings. Yeah. Now, do you have like suggestions for people like because you know everyone you know everyone I've ever spoken to loves music I've never heard anyone say I hate music you know <laughs> so you know like if you if you really want to tap into your creativity and you just don't want to listen to music but you want to really dive a little deeper what would be some of your suggestions you know especially when it comes to songwriting you know like what are some ways you could actually start to maybe take a piece of paper and and tap into your your emotions and to your cre creativity and maybe even come out with a song and, and write a song yeah so you know i've mentioned to you before my two books said you and your guitar and mm -hmm. yeah obviously it says you and your guitar so it's for guitar players but it's the it's a two book set um, that applies to anyone learning anything because it's really about how to learn. And then of course it has a few specific things in it for your path to guitar, how to determine that that is. And, and you work with it interactively, interactively with the website. But the second book, the first book you read and study or whatever you want to do with it. The second book is a lovely journal. It's a hardback spiral bound journal. And it will prompt exactly what you're talking about because you've got pages for a number of different things. Write down anything that you see as inspiring, not just for a song, but you know, maybe in nature. Write mm -hmm. down things that you heard during the day or you thought of that were funny. You know, mm -hmm. not just not just, oh, this is a serious song I'm gonna write, but just things that um, really kind of get your attention or make you think a different way. Just keeping this journal, writing it, writing it. The journal is also a practice law. But um, those kinds of prompts and having it all in one place, like I call it the daily because you write in it daily. Um, mm -hmm. Having those kind of prompts that you get into the, to the uh, habit of recording. And this kind of figures into something else that I've been thinking a lot about, I'll mention, is an integrated life. You know, so we don't compartmentalize. This is where I practice guitar. This is when I watch TV or whatever. You know, this is when I work. But everything is is everything. So that you keep music, you keep creativity, you keep all of that in mind without having to set aside a particular time and then walk away from it. Of course, you do want to set aside time for your creativity and your self-expression practicing your instrument, whatever you do, that's a, super important to set aside that time. But it, it's not going to be as helpful if you just wall it off. Like, this is the time for this. And then when you when you look at your schedule, it's time to go into the practice room or start writing. You're in a different mindset. You know, like, well, how do I get back in here? But if you kind of carry it with you through the day, let let little pieces of music roll in your head. Let let words and phrases roll in your head. Allow all that stuff in. And I think one way to do it is to not have other stuff going in nonstop, you know. So wow. choose what goes into your head. But right. um, but yes, those kinds of prompts. Um, and I, I also want to take this opportunity to say that what we're talking about, I mean, sort of what you led into this is is lyrics, which most people think of when they write a song or when they hear a song that says, oh, I, that is so relatable. 
I feel this or knows, but those lyrics are not a song. Those mm -hmm. lyrics are again integrated. So what makes the song powerful is all those other elements as well as the lyrics. So yeah. yes, we want to we want to think what do we want to say? How do we want to say? It? That's a super important part of songwriting is the lyrics. But the other parts, I'm going to refer everybody back to the podcast we did that we called Bridging the Gap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe that one from uh, from music fan to player. Because in yeah. that, we went through some things together that were fun, where we talked about melody, harmony, rhythm, and form. So now right. in songwriting, we're going to be talking about melody, harmony, rhythm, form, and lyrics. Okay? So, so bringing all of those things in, like you're going to keep track of your thoughts and quips whatever comes up in your day or comes up into your mind that you think might be interesting or might be something that would be food for a song and right. then you're also going to be paying attention when you listen to music and when you listen to music in your head to those other elements because those are the tools for writing your song those are the elements that you'll need in your song I think it's, you know, it, it's really important to have, keep a journal to keep all that information in a journal. And every time you get a creative moment or a creative spark or something, you know, if you were out and about and maybe you were going on a walk or something like that, and then you actually, you know, something inspired you, you know, you can go home and you can jot that down in the journal and then you can start really seeing what really sparks you, what really brings emotion and thought and, and really, you know, starts to get that creativity going. And I think that's when you could really figure out creativity, who you are as a create creative person, what really inspires you in the world, what really gets your, your brain turning and, and your emotions rare and, 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 you know, really bring out that passion and that love to, to create a song and to be able to actually, you know, not just create it, but then think about the music that goes behind it too. And, and, yeah. you know, and then really going broader into, into music, just like, you know, you teach, you know, maybe picking, picking up a guitar and, and if you don't know how to pick up a guitar, you know, maybe learning how to pick up a guitar and, and really place those words with the music. And before you know it, you could really, you know, it, it um, really start to, to, you know, create, a, open up a new world for yourself that you didn't even realize. And if you are in that world, World, you can even improve it and really dive deeper into it and and get to levels that you probably didn't even think that you were capable of getting to yes yes to all of that and i think that you know there's an element perhaps the biggest element of creating anything is it's magical like where did it come from you don't even know when you're the one that creates it where it came from and i know for me Anything that I write, whether it's music or, you know, just the written word or whatever, once it's out of me, it's not me anymore. Like I can go back and read it later and I go or listen to it or listen to an instrumental, even if it's not lyrics or anything, anything that I've created and go, wow. And I'm reacting to it as if I didn't do it. You know, I have to laugh at myself sometimes and go, well, it's probably not. You know, don't let anybody else hear you say that's really good. <laughs> but But it doesn't feel... Um, egotistical or anything because it's not me anymore it's out yeah you know what I'm saying so there's a mystery around that and and so that mystery as beautiful it is as it is can also be intimidating because how do you create that how do you make that happen you can't really make it happen but what you do is create an environment for it to come into Right. So just allow it. And I think, you know, back to the journal, if you have the daily, it's got all the prompts in it for you. And uh, But if you have whatever kind of journal you have, um, then those are little snippets of things that you're just planting. You're just mm -hmm. planting. And then when you're relaxed, you know, I, I've had my most creative, everything that that I've ever created that I really thought was a value was either mucking out the paddock for my horses or in the shower <laughs> because that's when I'm alert and awake but relaxed mind right all right so so that's what we want to cultivate which is another thing that you and your guitar 
talks about and helps you with, and the journal helps you with, the day rate helps you with, is cultivating that state, that relaxed, alert state of mind where you're curious and there's no pressure and mm -hmm. there's no deadline, but there is uh, intention. Yes. Strong intention. So you learn to be really focused without being tense, right? Mm -hmm. And without worrying about um, how am I doing? How am I doing here? What kind of grade am I going to get? You know, right. that interrupts that flow that we're looking for. And then the more you, uh, um, the more you create, the more you gain confidence in your ability to do that. And so you can more easily and frequently step into that state that allows yeah. your self-expression. But all those little, there, there's so many things you can do to set, your, set yourself up for it. And a big one is like all those little things that you notice during the day and you record in your journal. Right. You know, people say, if you if you read or listen to people say, how do you get to be a good songwriter? Oh, practice, practice, practice. Well, what do you practice? You know, I mean, that's a big leap. And I can't do anything. I don't know how to. So I'm practicing what? You know, so that's why. That's what I come in and help you with. Okay, here are the elements. Let's practice writing some short melodies. We don't care if they turn into a song. You know, let's practice working with rhythms. All those elements, melody, rhythm, harmony, form. So you get so familiar with them that you have your toolbox. You have all those little snippets of things running around in your life, in your psyche. And then you relax and focus toward some particular topic. You mm -hmm. may veer off of it and come up with something completely different. Yeah, which is really cool and very common. <laughs> um, but you you get it out and that magic just happens. Right. And you learn to count on it more. You learn to trust it more, I should say. You know, it's funny that, you know, a lot of um, songwriters said that their best number one songs came out when they were going through like breakups or emotional times in their life, you know, is when, when they really were able to express themselves on paper. And those are the songs that really hit the number one charts because everybody can relate to it. It seems yeah. too like once you learn how to write songs and you start to get good at it, you know, if you could really tap into your emotions and tap into things that other people can relate to, I think that's when song, you know, songwriting becomes very powerful and it could be a powerful tool of healing too, because you're emotionally getting those emotions out on paper. You're putting it into a song and then you're bringing music into it. And then people are listening to the melody, they're listening to the words, and then they can relate to it in their own lives. And it's, and it's kind of could be like a, a healing process, you know, or, and yeah. it can bring up those repressed emotions too. And that's why it could be so healing. It can, and, and you can also choose what you want to, to experience, you know, like yeah. affirmation songs, songs of affirmation, things like that. Right. But also, you know, when you were talking about the feelings, um, something that most people probably haven't considered that I think is very powerful is instrumental music that speaks to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... I mean, I'm thinking specifically of a Chopin piece that I listen to over and over again. I have certain things that I'll listen to every morning for a while, you know. And and I could, and I felt like I could, obviously it's instrumental, but I felt like I could just almost hear those words. Like I could reach out, like, you know what the composer's saying. Yeah. It's a language. You know how like you can listen to music in another language and, mm -hmm. and understand it? It's yeah. like so the, the instrumental part, when you get to where you can create music without lyrics that say that, and then you yeah. add those lyrics and you merge those two, wow. Right. That's powerful. Yeah. Because even if you look at like Andre Bucelli and, you know, a lot of operatic singers, people will go nuts over. Now, they'll sing in Italian and, you know, nobody's not really going to understand. They'll they'll say a few American words or they might do the American version here and there. But you don't even have to understand the language. You're just listening to the music and you just it feel it feels so powerful. It feel, it's just like stirring your emotions up. And it's it's just 
you know, even though you don't understand the words, it, it's, it's, it's really gearing to your, your heart and it's really, yeah. you know, opening up the doors. Yeah. You're getting the meaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. words are for anyway. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. In some ways I, I'm thinking that like what we have to be careful with, with lyrics is to not get in the way of the meaning. Yeah. To not smash the meaning to you know to take care of it so it's it's nuanced you know so just like if you write anything poetry especially um you don't want to hit somebody over the head with it <laughs> <laughs> you want to evoke the feeling mm -hmm. you know? um you don't you, you know you don't just expect for somebody to cry because you say i'm sad yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad. Tell me about it. Tell me the details about it, you know. And so you can do that in the lyrics and in the music. Right. I think I think um when it when it comes to like lyric lyric writing, when you said you don't want to smash the lyrics or get away from it, can you like under like explain that to people? Like, you know, because is it because you can you can just, you know, sometimes get off track like we do sometimes with conversation? Is that what you mean? No, I think I'm talking about what I would call painting with such a broad brush that mm -hmm. you don't get to see the details. So I'm right. talking about, like my examples, like if I'm if I'm singing, I'm sad, I'm sad, I'm so so sad. Like, what's that going to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So um, I know I was talking to somebody about this this morning, this concept, and I said, you know, it's like you know, if you just want to lay down and die somebody that's just the most extraordinary musician composer songwriter sting when he says you know if nature's red and tooth and claw like winter's freeze and summer's thaw the wounds she gave me are the wounds that would heal me um, you know? and i said like and then like a, somebody novice would just go ouch you know they would like or ow that hurt you know but yeah. you know that is so poetic and it it grabs you and you really know it. Then you really know, you know, it's a deep feeling. It's not somebody whining or right. trying to write a song. Yeah. Trying to make you feel something. It's coming right. from deep within. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, don't get in the way. Don't smash it with a hammer and say, I'm so angry or I'm yeah. so, yeah. tell me about it. Tell me the details of it. Mm-hmm. No, I like that. I, I, I like when, when singers sing from the heart and they, they, they talk with detail and you can, it, you can actually like put yourself in, into the words and you could actually, it just, uh, your heart starts taking control, you know, and it, and it's just, uh, but you, you're, you're hearing those detailed words and, and it's just either you're imagining yourself in a situation that maybe never occurred or you're bringing back an old emotion, you know, from a past experience, but those details, I think really help make a, make a song, you know, so powerful. Yes. And you can't not get it. Mm -hmm. So I think for songwriting, just like if you're writing an article, you know, anything that you write, if you write a novel, um, it's it's very valuable to always step back and see how how does this come across what what is it so one thing that I feel happens with a novice songwriter or any kind of writer is they're asking too much of the listener like they're making the listener work to try and figure out what am I supposed to get here and we don't want to do that we want to be transported pick me up and take me to that place right mm -hmm. yeah I like that I like that a lot now if, if you had to like really if give advice to people and and you know help people with their songwriting what what are some things that you would you would tell somebody who's looking to actually learn how to do songwriting or you know improve their songwriting you know what are some of the things that people could start to practice you know and and do like you mentioned a journal but what are other stuff that people could do to enhance their creative ability well, I think, and I, I mentioned this, I think they should listen to our podcast a couple back on yeah. Bridge the Gap, because that's number one, is that you understand the elements that you're going to be working with. And right. you may go, yeah, yeah, I understand all that. But 
I have, you know, I have a friend who's a, a music teacher. She's been teaching for 40 years and she listened mm -hmm. to it and she said, oh yeah, I need to work more on listening to harmony. And so she was getting stuff from it. So you don't have to not know anything about music. If you, if you listen to it with an open mind, you'll review or maybe go more deeply into each of those elements. So that's a simple thing you can do while you're washing the dishes. You don't have to, you don't have to sit down and study it hard. Just, just get yeah. it. Um, so getting familiar with those uh, critical elements and then just what we've talked about, uh, start writing down musical ideas, have your phone handy or anything that you can record on that's quick and easy. It, it doesn't have to be and probably shouldn't be anything fancy because then it'd be too much to get out and get set up and everything. Something you can just record musical ideas. Because yeah. that, 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 you know, it doesn't have to be played on an instrument, whatever. Yeah. But keep notes of the mel melodic fragments, uh, words, phrases, that sort of thing. And then, um, then just however much more deeply you can go into your instrument or um, just learning more about those elements. But also, um, I thought there's something else and it, it left me here a second. I'll think of it again. Um, just understanding how to create chord progressions that will support your message. Mm -hmm. you know, so, um, very important also know how to play and sing but at the very least sing a number of songs you know right you are going to learn about songs by playing and singing songs mm -hmm. and i'll bring back up something else that i brought up in previous podcasts and you can link to this in the show notes if you like which is that free book you can go onto my website and download or go into the show notes if you put them in and download the book the world still needs these songs 20 songs very clear great songs for one thing so you're going to be studying or playing listening to songs that are well written like really well written they've they've lasted over 100 years so that's something right there and then um you'll have an idea of how they're constructed. It's all pretty clear cut. So right. we're on these songs, that's free. Um, the podcast is free. Um, stay in touch with my newsletter, which is free. Um, and listening, yeah. Listening and making notes. All those things are, are going to help you out. I love it. I think, I think, you know, all the things you stated are, are great and we'll put, we'll put everything in the description box. Cause there's, I know there's several services that you're providing and you're also providing a, um, a discounted coupon for people for a limited time that you, you have, um, an exclusive $50 discount, uh, when they use the code advisor 50 and they can, um, find the work, the, work, the uh, workshop on the uh, description link along with um, the uh, songbook. And you have also, you have um, your, um, the link to you and your guitar, which is your, your um, that they can download as well. And uh, these are great things, especially if you're trying to be learn how to really enhance music into your life. And if you, you know, especially songwriting and learning how to correlate music with songwriting, uh, these are great things to look into. So I highly suggest uh, to the listeners that they check out these links. And I think you're doing a great job. Now, can you tell everybody where you can find your services? Limitless dash guitar.com so my and website limitless guitar and everything's on there you can get all the things that you just mentioned um and you can find me because if you want to ask me questions set up one session or a series or whatever you want i'm going to be there because i check it all the time i'm i answer my emails promptly and I care about people who are interested in these things. So don't be shy. You can always email me and I'll, I'll write you back and get you going in whatever direction you want. There's also a page on the site, uh, Choosing Your Path. So it'll help you know 
where you are. You can assess where you are in your learning and what would be next. But, um, but yeah, and if you're interested in songwriting, this is a really deep discount. And I'm not offering it to anybody except the listeners of this show. So, um, yeah, it's not one of those things like, oh, I'm offering it to everybody and just telling you it's exclusive. <laughs> it's it's just for you guys who are listening. And um, I would love to see you. It's the, the workshop, the one-on-one workshop consists of three private sessions with me and then assignments in between. I'll send you preparatory stuff, kind of like you said today. What would you suggest people to do? I'll send you some articles and you know recommend some things to kind of get you prepared. And then we meet and we workshop your songs. Create one from scratch or workshop one you've already got, whatever you want. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to add to the conversation about everything that we talked about today? I think the only thing is to know that, and we did kind of touch on this, but everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. And that's so much fun. Yeah. So you should try it. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's I think everybody has the creativity in, in them that they could they can learn how to write a song and they can learn how to how to play an instrument if they really wanted to. I think, you know, it's it's funny. I think sometimes people think because I mean maybe not everybody's a singer and you know, some people might sing and and I, I told you when I used to try to sing, people would put their hand over my mouth. <laughs> So, but everybody has that creativity, you know, like, and I, like I was telling you, a lot of times a, a song will come on and I'll hear the first two words. And before they, I even heard the, the, you know, a new song, the, the, the end of the sentence, I already had the words in my head because just, it just seemed like it would flow nicely. So I think everybody has creativity. If you're not a singer, you know, you could definitely be a songwriter. You could definitely be a guitar player, you know, and you just have to, you know, learn it and practice it and it you know it'll take time but everybody has the ability i i believe everybody has the ability yes. everybody has intuition too and that's part of it you know so it's it's a matter of learning to trust that those two are linked you know your creativity your intuition that's that magic that comes from where and mm -hmm. then like i said you learn to trust that and then it starts to be more and more fun because you can call it up at yeah. will yeah I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, this has been amazing, Charlotte. I love when you come on. I love when you talk about music. I love, you know, we've covered so many different things about music and all your, in all your videos, you know, we've, we've gone from, you know, learning, just understanding, you know, diving deep into what music really is, what the sound really means and how to understand the, the, the moods of the, of the, uh, of music and how to bridge the gap and, and how not to just be a fan, but to how to be a player. And, you know, you've talked about so many different things and, and throughout your, all your podcasts, people could learn so much, but if they have one-on-one -on -one with you, I think people will learn so much more. And, and, and I think they would get it a lot quicker because I think, you know, you have the ability and not only the ability, but you have that love and passion in you that you'll get it across to the, to the listener. You'll get it across to the, to the student that wants to learn. And, you know, I really have to commend you on all your efforts, you know, and uh, you're doing a great job. And I, I love, come on, you're just a wonderful person and you have a huge heart and you're just a very creative person. You, you do too. And I really appreciate you so much. So wow. yeah, it's good. I'm glad we found each other. Yes, me too. Me too. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And I look forward to when you come back and, you know, and I can't wait to see what we talk about next. So thank you so much. You too. Always a pleasure. Yeah, same here. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.